Thank you, Cahirlock. And uh, Minister, my question is in relation to overcrowding in our acute hospitals. And I'm sure you will have seen the repeated warnings from healthcare tra trade unions over the last number of weeks that hospital overcrowding is very close to being back at pre-pandemic levels, which is unacceptable. And we know that overcrowding in hospitals is a symptom of a wider problem in relation to a lack of capacity. So my question is asking, what are the levels of overcrowding in hospitals? And also, what are you going to do to increase capacity in our public systems to, on the one hand, reduce overcrowding, but also you, reduce unacceptably high wait times? Can I thank the Deputy for raising this uh, very important issue and I'd like to acknowledge that our hospital system is facing challenges and has been close to full capacity in recent weeks. Uh, and it's very important to acknowledge that this has caused distress for patients, for their families and of course for our frontline uh, healthcare workers who are working in very challenging uh, conditions. Attendances at emergency departments have increased steadily since the beginning of the year and we're almost back to 2009 levels for the same time last year, just before the ransomware attack uh, in May occurred. Comparison to 2019 is the last year to which reasonable comparisons can be made due to the unusual attendance patterns last year. The HSC has estimated that for the, for the week ending the 4th of July, attendances were up 12% on the same time in 2019. There's a number of reasons for this, including the opening of society as COVID-19 restrictions are lifted and additional GP referrals due to issues accessing diagnostics arising from the ransomware attack. The increased attendances, COVID-19 related patient safety protocols and manual workarounds and reduced access to diagnostics due to the ransomware attack have all been contributing to slower progress of patients through the system. The government has funded significant initiatives across the health service to expand capacity, uh, including as the deputy uh, and I have discussed before, the 600 million euros that was invested in the winter plan for, uh, for last winter. Uh, and, and it's worth noting that uh, in spite of all the pressures that COVID brought to bear over the winter, uh, thanks to this uh, investment, this very significant investment and extraordinary work right across our healthcare system, the ED attendances for the winter, which arguably should have been the highest on record, were actually the lowest on record. And I would just like to credit everyone in our healthcare system who has uh, contributed to that. And Deputy, I, I have more that I can uh, share with you in Thank the, the follow-up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy? Thank you. And, and can I say to the Minister that uh, it is the case that uh, overcrowding is becoming uh, a problem in hospitals again and that was always going to be the case as we came out of a very very difficult time for for those who work on the front line and i do want to acknowledge as the minister has has said that it has been a very very difficult year for those on the front line because of covid on the one hand a cancellation of a lot of non-essential health care and a slowing down at times of essential health care and then we had the cyber attack but the waiting lists have been a problem long before the pandemic and overcrowding has been a problem long before the pandemic and while the government did make substantial additional investment available for the healthcare system last year in the budget when you tried to find out how many of the beds were delivered whether it's the acute beds or community beds it's very difficult to get the answers maybe that was down to the cyber attack but i'd like if the minister was able to share that information for us for your information minister next week i will be launching a document myself on in my view, how we can reduce waiting lists. Hey, the government often says, where are the solutions? Well, here are some of the solutions. I'll make Anhara. sure you get a copy of this. And I would like to see you bring forward your plan on how we're going Thank to reduce deputy. waiting lists in the time ahead. Anhara. Uh, thank you, Deputy, and I'd, I'd be, I look forward to seeing the document. I don't think anyone has uh, any monopoly on the solutions to this, so I'd be very much look forward to seeing, uh, seeing the proposals. Uh, directly to your question then, Deputy, through the winter plan and this year so far, an additional 834 acute beds have been delivered, with another 229 expected uh, this year. In addition, 73 subacute beds have been added, with 40 more planned uh, for this year. Uh, there's also been substantial funding to increase uh, home support hours, as the, the deputy will be aware. Um, and the strategic plan for critical care is now in place, which aims to increase ICU capacity to 
uh, 321 by the end of this year and 446 in the longer term. Uh, the 52 million provided for implementation in the plan will allow for an additional 66 beds to be put in place and Deputy the HFC, HSE has, has advised me that 42 of those 66 beds are now open bringing our baseline ICU capacity as of right Thank now you, to 297 beds. Thank you Minister. Anyakta. Well, Margaret, and, uh, and if the Minister could, could send on all of that uh, information, it would be very uh, helpful. Minister, an awful lot of what was promised, though, hasn't been delivered, and I accept that's additional capacity, and I accept that it's going to make a difference. So any additional bed, any additional staff member is something in the health service that I will welcome. But I've said this on a number of occasions to you before. The problems are not just capacity. That's one part of it. It's also structural changes which need to be made. But capacity is critical. I want to see, for example, the introduction of unique patient identifiers so that we have a system that can actually speak to itself and it is integrated. I want to see an integrated waiting list system. But I also want to see hospital consultants having access to diagnostic equipment. We know that much of that equipment is antiquated, needs to be replaced. Uh, we also know that they struggle and fight uh, to get access to theatre space and we need to expand capacity in that area and that's where the budget was light last year on capital investment and we also need to follow through on all of the commitments that were made that were substantial but not Thank all you, of which were delivered in terms of beds and staff and that's the critical part. It's one you, thing to promise but we have to deliver. Um, th thanks, Deputy, and, and I must say I agree with a lot of what you've, uh, what you've just said. In terms of building up the acute capacity, uh, it is the biggest expansion in a single year that, that, that I'm aware of that has ever been, uh, ever been uh, attempted, and the reports back from the HSE are very, very positive. Now, to your point, uh, there are areas where the, the planned expansion uh, ha isn't on target, largely because of COVID and, and, and cyber attacks, and obviously it's been a very difficult year. But specifically to what we're talking about, actually there, there is really good progress. They're doing really, really well. Uh, and I think you quite rightly referenced diagnostics as well, access to diagnostics. One area where we've invested a lot this year is uh, access to diagnostics for GPs, which obviously takes some of the pressure off the acute system. Uh, and the feedback I'm getting from GPs where, where that has been invested in is very, very positive. It's, it's keeping patients being treated in their community. And really, uh, it, it's a matter of doing all of this so that the patient pathway the whole way through uh, is, in, is increased yeah, so sure. people can stay in the community and if they do need to go into hospital, get back out to the community as quickly Minister. as possible. Uh, 